you must have seen sand castles in sea beaches these sand castles are short lived as they are eventually destroyed by sea waves in this video we can see that a huge sand castle is being continuously hit by the sea waves and its size is decreasing gradually at the end only a small heap of sand remains just like this sand castle the mountains present on the earth's surface are also subjected to weathering and erosion for years today we will study about these mountains now before studying about those mountains let us first look at these two pictures the first one is of the himalayas In this picture we can see that the Himalayas are very tall and lofty and it has steep slopes and a peak The Himalayan peak is shrouded with clouds so from this we can understand that the Himalayas are very tall in fact the approximate elevation of the Himalayas is 8849 meter Now consider the second picture This picture is of Nilgiris. Now compare these two pictures. See, the height of the Himalayas is huge. While look at the picture of Nilgiris. The Nilgiris have lower heights compared to the Himalayas. In fact the approximate elevation of Nilgiris is 1800 meters to 4800 meters In other words the Himalayan range is 4 times taller than the Nilgiris Now why do we have such difference in heights or or why nilgiris have such lower elevation let's find out the reason the nilgiris were not always this low in fact they were once a part of huge mountains now over the years these huge mountains have been denuded by natural forces like a river or a wind as we can see in this video these agents act upon the superficial soft rocks and erode them continuously thereby exposing the underlying hard rocks this is how residual mountains are formed residual mountains as the name suggests are the residue or the remains of huge ancient mountains thus residual mountains are denuded by wind water etc for years thereby exposing the underlying hard rocks beneath them and these underlying hard rocks forms the residual mountains so the nilgiris we just studied about is an example of residual mountain Nilgiris is situated in Tamil Nadu. Another example of residual mountain in India is the Rajmahal Hills. Rajmahal Hills is situated in Jharkhand. Now look at the picture of Nilgiris and Rajmahal Hills. See both these mountain ranges have lower elevation. Now why these mountain ranges have lower elevation? This is because these mountain ranges have been denuded by the natural forces like running water or wind for years and they are the residue of pre-existing huge mountains and therefore they are called residual mountains. Thus we can classify the mountains into three types on the basis of their formation and the three types are fold mountains block mountains and residual mountains now i have already discussed about the formation of fold mountains and block mountains in my previous video you can pause the video and use the i dictionary feature to revise the topic well let me again tell you that fold mountains are formed by the collision of 
tectonic plates. When two tectonic plates collide, the overlying rocks gets folded or crumble up. Now, this is the picture of the Himalayas. Himalayas is an example of fold mountains. Now, block mountains are formed when a part of land subsides or raised up when two tectonic plates diverge. Now, here we have the picture of a block mountain and this is the picture of Narmada Narmada Rift Valley and here we have two block mountains, Vindhyas and Satpura Ranges. Now the third category is the residual mountains. As I have already discussed, residual mountains are the residue or the remains of ancient mountain ranges. These ancient mountain ranges were once very huge and they are continuously denuded by natural forces because of which their height have reduced. Now this is the picture of Nilgiris and as I have already mentioned, Nilgiris is an example of a residual mountain. Therefore, we can classify the mountains into three types on the basis of their process of formation. They are fold mountains, block mountains and residual mountains. Which of the following mountains are the remnants of old mountains? Is it the fold mountains, block mountains, volcanic mountains or residual mountains? Well, the correct answer is residual mountains. This is because we just read that residual mountains as the name suggests are the residue or remains of old mountains. So the correct answer is residual mountains. In our previous lesson, we studied that the Aravallis were formed 350 million years ago, while the Himalayas were formed 50 to 60 million years ago and are still building. So from this, we can infer that all the mountains present on the Earth's surface were not formed at the same time. So on the basis of this, we can classify the period of mountain building formation into three time periods. Some mountains were formed quite a long time ago in ancient period, that is nearly 315 million years ago. This period of mountain formation is called Caledonian period. Here we have examples of two mountain ranges that were formed in Caledonian period. The first one is the Aravallis. The Aravallis is situated in the northwestern part of India. The second example is the Grampians or the mountains of Scotland. See, this part is Scotland and Grampians is situated here in Scotland. So, Aravallis and Grampians are examples of mountains that were formed in the Caledonian period. Now look at the pictures of these two mountain ranges. See both these mountains have lower heights, gentle slopes and rounded peaks. So from these characteristics we can understand that these mountain ranges are very old and they were formed millions and millions of years ago. Now over the years these mountain ranges have been subjected to weathering and erosion for years and because of which their heights have reduced. So Aravallis and Grampians are examples of mountain ranges that were formed in Caledonian period. Now the second period of mountain building is the Hercynian period. This can be dated back to 240 million years ago. Now the mountain ranges that were formed in this period are the Appalachians mountains and the Ural mountains. 
Now, the Appalachian Mountains is located in North America, while the Ural Mountains is located between the continents of Asia and Europe. This is Europe and this is Asia. So, the Ural Mountains act as a natural boundary between Europe and Asia. Now, both these mountain ranges, that is the Appalachian Mountain and the Ural Mountains are examples of mountain ranges that were formed in the Hercynian period. Now, the mountains that are formed very recently, that is nearly about 50 to 60 million years ago are part of alpine period. So, alpine period refers to the period when mountains are formed very recently. Now, the examples of mountain ranges that belong to the alpine period are Rockies and Himalayas. Rockies is situated here in North America while Himalayas is situated in India and is the part of Asian continent. Now as you can see from the pictures Rockies and Himalayas are very tall and have steep slopes. From these characteristics, we can understand that these mountain ranges are very young, that is, they have been formed very recently. Thus, Rockies and Himalayas are examples of mountain ranges that belong to the Alpine period. So, now we can classify the mountain building period into three. The first one is the Caledonian period, the second one is the Hercynian period and the third one is the Alpine period. Caledonian period refers to the timeline nearly about 315 million years ago. That is, the mountains that were formed 315 million years ago belong to the Caledonian period. And the example of such mountain ranges are Aravallis and Grampians. The second one is the Hercynian period. This period dates about 240 million years ago. So, the mountain ranges that were formed nearly 240 million years ago belong to the Hercynian period. And the example of such mountain ranges are Appalachian Mountains and Ural Mountains. The last one is the Alpine period. This is a very recent mountain building period and the timeline is 50 to 60 million years ago. So, the mountains that were formed 50 to 60 million years ago and are still building belong to the Alpine period and the example of such mountain ranges are Rockies and Himalayas. So, today we have studied about residual mountains. We have studied that residual mountains are the residue or remains of ancient mountains that were once very huge and have been denuded by natural forces like wind and water continuously over the years. Next, we have studied about three mountain building periods. In our next video, we will study about the importance of mountains. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one-to-one -one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5,000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like Playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, but it's rewarding too. So register for free now.